What's up, everybody? My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Umaneko When They Cry Answers Arc. Last episode, we continued with chapter slash episode 5, and we learned more about the epitaph. Some clues were given, I, I'd assume. Uh, no solution yet, and I still have no idea what the heck it could mean. But, hey, we got clues at least, so we're a step further, I'd assume. Either way, though, uh... Yeah, not much really left to say about it. Oh yeah, we got more of a read on Erica's character. She's pretty smug. Pretty smug little blue hair, little girl person thing. So, yeah, let's just continue, I guess. After I finished helping Aunt Rosa, I passed through the corridor on my way to the bathroom and saw Erica unlocking the door to a room on my path. Okay. <laughs> I thought your room was on the second floor. Figured you'd gone upstairs and had fallen asleep by now. I was just searching for something. I thought it might be here. Searching for something? I just realized my window's a little fucked up here. There we go. Erica unlocked the door and opened it. A dusty smell drifted out. Ah, so we're still on the epitaph thing, right? I think, I'd assume, maybe. We haven't really used this room much. Like, it appeared for part of a scene in Chapter 3, or Episode 3. But, yeah, that's something. Oh well, it was the library. For a library, the gaps between bookshelves were extremely small. This was obviously built for storing books, not reading them. So it's a book you're searching for. Not necessarily a book, but materials, I guess you could say. There's something I've just got to look up. You're looking for something to do with the Epitaph's riddle? Pretty impressive that you haven't given up yet. Is the 20 billion yen really that enticing? I hadn't given up either. Apparently being stubborn is something we both share. Of course not. I'm only interested in solving puzzles. I search for the gold only to prove my reasoning correct. Even if I found it, I wouldn't pocket it for myself, so I have no fears on that score. She immediately cast my comment aside, saying that she just liked solving riddles and had no interest at all in the gold. Hmm. Okay. I mean, 20... Was it 20 billion yen? I'm pretty sure it's 20 billion yen. Uh... That's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> I thought she was pretty weird from the start, and it looks like that impression was spot on. Erica slowly circled the bookshelves, searching for the book she was after. I'm also trying to solve the epitaph right now. Oh yeah, just a second ago, I heard something interesting from Aunt Rosa, which might give us a hint about the first Twilight. Let me hear it. Erica asked this without stopping her search, or even turning to face me. In the line before the first Twilight, it says that one who obtains the key must do so-and-so. The one who obtains the key must then travel to the Golden Land in accordance with these rules. Whoa, you've already got it memorized? Guess I shouldn't be surprised. And what about that? Yeah, you've got to travel to the Golden Land, right? Apparently this made Aunt Rosa think about the 10th Twilight. In other words, going on a 10-day journey from the beloved homeland to the Golden Land. Actually, I'd already noticed that myself. You start from the place reached on the first day of the 10-day journey. That's where you take the sacrifices from. Yeah, that's what Aunt Rosa thought of too. I think the theory's pretty intriguing. We're looking for the place you'd reach on the first day of a 10-day journey. That bit of land, or else the name of the at region might be a key. Hmm. I'd also, I also guess that the place's name might be a key. That's why I'm looking for materials. I want to turn my guess into certainty. Just what are you looking for? Then Erica's hand suddenly stopped and she slowly pulled it out. As she dusted it off, she finally looked at me and spoke. It's an atlas. Well, that would help. That was the end of a scene? I'm, I always stop like four minutes before the end of a scene. Seriously, what the heck? Oh well, whatever, what's next? Oh yeah, the clock. The time is 10 p.m., I think. Yeah, p.m. So, rain, mansion, 
Go figure. <laughs> Those two things are always usually put together. Hello, Natsuhi. It seems we've managed to make it through the first day. Natsuhi could be seen in the study. When she muttered as though to herself, gold butterflies appeared and formed the shape of a person. Hello, Beatrice. We mustn't let our guards down. I can't imagine we'll last through tomorrow if we simply sit around here. So as I suspected, simply saying father's in a bad mood and refuses to come out won't be enough to deceive them completely. Indeed, it seems last year left them quite suspicious. Because of that, the toxin has expanded and is coiling itself around the study, growing ever tighter. <coughs> oh, hey, hey, hello. <laughs> I imagine it goes beyond mere suspicions raised last year. Oh, Virgilia. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. You haven't shown up in a short while. That's right. The toxin has grown too thick to be explained away by that alone. Someone must have suspected Kinzo's death since last year and is strongly intent on exposing that secret at this year's family conference. Hideyoshi, I guess. Does that mean we didn't have them fully decided, deceived even a full year ago? Unfortunately, it's probably best to assume that, given our current situation. The typhoon will remain here tomorrow, and the boat will not come for them until the day after. In short, we must endure for another 36 hours at the very least. It may not be visible to your eyes, Natsuhi, but the closed room barrier sealing this room was once very firm. Tonight, however, it has been worn down almost to the point of crumbling, like dry leaves awaiting a windstorm. No, the storm is already here. Natsuhi, I propose that we switch from the closed room barrier to something else. What do you mean by that? Are you suggesting we change our plan? That is correct. Wait. Who's, <laughs> who's saying this? Rona? I I'll guess Rona, eh? That is correct. Virgilia and I will construct reconstruct a barrier similar to last year's. In other words, we'll take Kinzo out of the study and have him tightrope walk from shadow to shadow where the toxin can't reach. Just like last year. It may be dangerous, but I would like to second her proposal. Oh, maybe that was run away again. Is this a joke? Do you truly intend to change the plan this far in? When one realizes they cannot withstand a siege, they must consider the option of abandoning the castle. I just thought of something. Hmm. Me, me just thought of something. I remembered just now. Virgilia, like, I was thinking, why in the hacky hack hack is Natsuhi not discussing this plan with, like, Kumasawa, Genji, Cannon, Shannon, and Kraus, the people who know about Kinzo's death? Then I remembered... There's a parallel between um, Virgilia and Kumasawa, and there's a parallel between Ronove and Genji. Kraus isn't here right now, because I wouldn't imagine he'd be the parallel with Beatrice. So is Shannon the parallel with Beatrice? It, it'd probably be too easy to assume that. Like, I can't just assume Shannon is the culprit like, in all four games, and I guess this one, too? Just due to the fact that she knows about Kinzo's death, and so does this Beatrice. But then again, Gap. So maybe, uh, Who would... I, I mentioned in the first episode of this series that I think there's a connection between Gap and Eva, but that connection wasn't strong. It's just that Gap fights with Kix, and it's been told often that Eva is a very big kicker. She kicks things. She takes martial arts. She knows how to kick things. But, yeah, Gap, I guess, is the wrench in that theory. Unless Gap is canon, maybe the connections don't really matter by gender, and canon is the culprit in all four games. But it could also be Kraus, and they're just trying to throw us off. But... Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Maybe another person knows about it. Oh well, whatever. When one tr realizes they cannot withstand a siege, they must consider the option of abandoning the castle. Right now, this room is like a castle surrounded by enemy troops, with its walls about to crumble. If staying put means certain death, then you also have the option of riding out 
for one last stand and an honorable defeat. After all, surrender doesn't seem to be an option in this fight. I will protect Father's secret until the very end. If it's discovered, we'll have no chance to talk our way out of it. My husband's embezzlement will be exposed to the light of day, and the Ushromia family's honor will be destroyed. We must remain firm and prevent that no matter what may happen. Calm down, I understand you. Krauss's alchemy will soon yield great results. If we can just make it through this year, we'll manage. So don't get flustered. Krauss's alchemy. Beatrice is considered the alchemist. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really stretching now, aren't I? But we use this strategy precisely because we wouldn't be able to pull off the same trick as last year, right? Isn't it the height of stupidity to return to a plan you previously abandoned because it was impossible? Just what sort of plan could we hope to make at this point? Runovay and I will prepare one. Leave it to us for creating illusions. Wait, leave it to us for creating illusions is what witches do. All you have to do is give us your permission, Natsuhi. Teacher and Runovay are quite reliable at times such as these. And the servants of the One-Winged Eagle are top notch furniture. Once Teacher and Ronave rebuild the magic we need, I imagine the servants will work hard to protect it. It still isn't too late. Let's take Kinzo out of the study and make that illusion walk around. Did you forget we chose our current strategy because we considered plants like that and couldn't find anything that would work? It'd be the height of foolishness to get flustered in an emergency and carelessly throw away our primary plan. But Natsuhi, as you stand there amidst the toxin, you must realize better than anyone else that we will no longer be able to outlast this siege. I propose that we try and think of another plan without changing our objective of holding the fort. In any event, as long as we can keep this room sealed, no one will be able to deny Father's existence. After all, one cannot determine the contents of a cat box that no number of people could ever hope to open. Hmm. Well, that may be true. But humans are capable of defying reason. It's possible for them to eat into an airtight cat box and go inside like black ants closing in on a box of cake. Lady Burncastle's piece also worries me. It was fortunate that Eric has told the show at tonight's dinner. By doing that, she created an atmosphere in which it was possible to close down the family conference for the night. If you all had di returned directly to the family conference as usual, the barrier might have broken tonight. However, it also made the toxin grow even thicker. After it thickens all night, it might manage to penetrate the closed room barrier with ease. Whether we continue to hold down the fort or not, we will not make it through tomorrow unless we prepare a new strategy and a new barrier. Lady Burncastle may have some plan for breaking the closed room barrier. We can't take that piece called Erica lightly. Hmm. It's weird to think of this. It is really, really weird to think of this. Like, Beatrice, Virgilia, and Ronave talking about Erica as a piece. As if, well, this Beatrice is also a piece, I'd imagine, since they're in this game. Being controlled by Lambda Delta. And they're talking about the pieces in the same room as Natsuhi. Who shouldn't know about the pieces or anything. Which is odd. But, whatever. Come to think of it, that man who mentioned taking revenge for the events of 19 years ago might also be a piece of Lady Burncastle's. This board achieved equilibrium with 18 pieces, but now it has two undesired pieces added to it. There are too many irregularities this year. Huh. Lady Burncastle is a fan of Eastern things. In shogi or Japanese chess, aren't you allowed to drop pieces in during a game? Yes, that is possible. Even the act of dropping a queen from the captured pile right in front of the enemy king is an allowable trump card in Shogi. Shogi sounds confusing then. I wonder what that man who claimed to have a connection from 19 years ago is doing now. Is he already hiding somewhere on this island? That girl called Erica was able to appear by claiming to have drifted here. That man might also have landed somewhere on this island despite the typhoon, and he may be hiding somewhere now. And it's going to be hard to fully deceive the relatives any longer. Why? Why have so many irregular things happened at the same time? How can you explain this nightmarish miracle of coincidence? Natsuhi slammed the desk hard, held her head, and cringed at the pain from her overwhelming headache. 
Lady Burncastle controls miracles. There's no point in being surprised at irregularities or miracles when she's around. Well, Shogi is a game in which an enemy piece might suddenly appear in front of a king. For that very reason, you build up a perfect formation that won't allow for such a weakness, artistically constructing a castle around your king. Yeah, she is participating in on this conversation, include, including mentions of Burncastle, which is odd. In that case, isn't holding the fort exactly what we should be doing now? Perhaps, if we had a fort we could hold, but we cannot hope for such a thing now. It's difficult to corner a king with no wall to his back, and even more difficult to corner one with open spaces in all directions. Think of a mouse. You can catch a mouse that's shut in a cage. However, catching a mouse in a field is like trying to catch a cloud. Natsuhi, please allow us to consider this option. Kinzo will leave his study and wander around the mansion on a whim, avoiding the gazes of the relatives. We will think of a natural seeming plan for this by morning. Don't you see the danger? If we're willing to consider such a dangerous option, wouldn't it be better to continue acting as though father's in his room in a bad mood? Tomorrow the relatives will crowd around the study once again. They'll be right on the other side of that single door. When that happens, just how long do you intend to make it seem like they're having a yelling like they're having a yelling match with Kinzo? It's impossible. Uh and we must find some way to postpone that impossibility for 36 hours. If you tell me to do it, I will. Okay, yeah, Nazi. I am Ushiro Mia Natsuhi, the wife of the Ushiro Mia family head. If you tell me to do that, I will act out a shouting match with father for as many days as it takes. Ugh! Even Natsuhi realized that she could never manage it, but she no longer saw any chance of victory from a plan that involved an illusion of Kinzo walking around. Banging on the desk several times, with tears of rage streaming down her face, Natsuhi alternated between groaning from her headache and placing the blame on one thing or another. It made one feel that there must be some curse that made anyone who sat in that chair act that way. This is like a game of mating shoji, where you are on the defensive. In mating shoji, the component has no king, and you have no way of winning other than avoiding a checkmate for a predetermined number of moves. And to think! that I must escape for a whole day and a half's worth of moves. It's just too many. Don't stop thinking. Don't give up. I'll listen to your complaints, so don't have a fit. Your unshaking will to overcome this trial will bring you success with certainty. That's the power of the Witch of Certainty for you. You must not lose that magical power. Believe that you will overcome this no matter what. I'm sure you'll think of a brilliant plan. Therefore, you mustn't give up, and you mustn't stop thinking. You're right. I understand. Only I can overcome this hardship. That is correct. Didn't Kinzo entrust you with the job of overcoming these challenges? Kinzo acknowledged that you were worthy of that responsibility. Father? Father? Ugh. Teacher and Ronove will think of a move. Of course, I will think as well. What's up with her hair? Like, her bangs has a little piece coming out from behind the bangs. It's weird. However, even that we cannot do... Even that we cannot do without permission from our master. From you! So at the very least, don't abandon your will to fight. Okay, then. From that very line... We, c we cannot do without permission from our master. From you. Our... So I'm thinking then, if this Beatrice is meant to represent the culprit of all the games, then it is probably Shannon, right? <sighs> but she, uh, but she died in the first game. Well, she could have accomplices. She died in the f first. There's too many irregularities with the first game, with the Red Truth kind of weaving itself through my theory that I did have, like, at the end of the first game that Shannon was the culprit, thinking Shannon, like, faked her death, got Cannon, Hideyoshi, Eva, and Nanjo in on the lie that she's dead, and she walked around and killed everybody else. She was never dead until maybe the 10th Twilight when the bomb blew up. Second game, there's really no reason to not think she could do it. Third game is where shit gets odd. 
because she's <clears throat> dead in the fucking parlor. Like, I don't see, like, unless her accomplice went for the rest of it. I mean, Eva did kill most of the people in that game. I mean, you can explain that game. You can explain Shannon uh, with the closed room ring. And you can explain Eva for the 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Twilights, and even with Batwer and George. But you can't explain Nanjo, which is the issue. Then there's the 4th game, which anybody could do that. Anybody, except for Batwer and Maria, basically. And maybe George or Jessica. Maybe Gota and Kumasawa. But Shannon has the opportunity. The third game, and Nanjo is the only irregularity. I don't really care about the chapel in the second game. Like, yeah, I can't explain that. I cannot. Like, unless you give me a massive fucking hint, I have no idea how that works. But what I do know is that basically anybody who was alive at that point could have committed that crime, depending, like, assuming that everybody had the opportunity to do that. Plus, Shannon had a master key, so she could have locked... Well, do the ma I don't remember if the master keys were able to unlock the chapel. If they were, obviously she could have done it. If they weren't, then there's the issue with the chapel key being in Maria's letter. So, great. Whatever, let's continue. Don't give up! I understand, I understand, but I'm already all tired out, and I can't stand this headache. Why is it that I'm crying here, all alone in this frigid study? Why, why isn't my husband here for me now? And then she says she's alone. So now I'm really confused. Back when dinner ended, Krauss claimed to be dizzy and went to bed early. Of course, he had done this to get enough rest to ready himself for the long day ahead. But to Natsuhi right now, it felt as though he'd just gone straight to sleep and pushed the entire burden on her. However, complaining about such a thing would mean her failure as a wife. Isn't it a good wife's duty to work hard and put family first, even when her husband is resting? Filled with regret even at her anger towards her husband, unable to determine at whom she should be angry, Natsuhi continued to sob. Hmm. If only Kinzo could just speak to her kindly at times like this. Beato searched for him, but Kinzo had been nowhere to be seen in the study for some time now. Perhaps Nasi had noticed this as well. Though she bragged that fighting alone and supporting from behind was the responsibility of a good wife, without anyone to tell her that this really was necessary, she was now so frail that she couldn't even stop her own tears. Just as Beata was trying to think of words to console Natsuhi, Virgilia tapped her lightly on the shoulder. Sometimes, when words of consolation don't come from the mouth of the right person, they can do more harm than good. So Virgilia silently told Beato that remaining silent was the best course of action for now. And there's Gap, the wrench in my theory. Hi, sorry to interrupt. I know I'm an outsider, but I wonder if you'd let me speak. An outsider. Oh my god. This wording is really messing with me when it comes to these characters representing other characters. Gap, please restrain yourself for the time being. No, in this room there's no distinction between outsiders, guests, and the rest of us. You may speak. Thank you. Romave said it himself a while ago. This is mating shogi with you on the defensive. How do you lose in mating shogi? It's when your king is checkmated, right? That goes without saying, and the opponent has no king. Therefore, all Natsi he can do is have her king run away constantly. I see. So you're thinking of that move. Has that time already come? What do you mean? Do you mean there's some sort of move remaining to us? It's what you proposed in the very beginning, about how to hide Goldsmith's death. I'm trying to say the time's come for us to use that. You mean having him go missing? You mean to make that move right now, during the family conference? That's too dangerous! Huh. Once they'd successfully resolved all of their problems, they would have to lay Kenzo to rest. And the best way to do that was to make him disappear. One day, Kenzo would go out into the forest and never return. They wouldn't be able to find him no matter how much they searched, so he would be declared missing. You said it yourself a second ago, Richie. You can't catch a mouse that's escaped into a field, and you can't catch a goldsmith who's disappeared into the forest. 
Do you plan for us to talk our way out of this like that? To use such a move now, when the suspicion against us is greatest, would be no better than committing suicide! Oh, they will probably suspect it. Such a move would most certainly lead to mistrust. However, even if they were to set foot in the study, they would find nothing to aid them. It would never again be possible for them to keep Kinzo pinned down. And no matter how much they suspected his death, they would be unable to prove it. Forget about a mere 36 hours. You'd be able to protect Kinzo's secret forever that way, right? Of course, we'll also have to bear an appropriate risk. If you make that move, you may be able to overcome this particular challenge. But we cannot even guess at how much prestige you might lose for it. Even so, it's a move that will most certainly overcome our current challenge. Of course, you'll then have to face an even greater suspicion. But you won't die. Y yes that may be true, but... During the Great Kanto Earthquake, the Ushiromiya family should have died. However, the mad genius goldsmith revived it so splendidly that it's now something you desire to protect. So this time, it is up to you and your husband, the new head and his wife, to do the same. Oh, is that how you intend to stir her up? I'm not stirring her up, I'm just asking if she's prepared to be the wife of the head. Are you prepared to protect the Ushiromiya family, even if you end up getting dragged through the dirt to do it? I am prepared. Then now is the time. If you can survive by being dragged through the dirt, then crawl with all your might. You'll inch your way through this world of suffering, and eventually you'll restore that glory. I, Gap, the 33rd in rank, promise you this. Gap! The fact that I came to play at a time like this must be a sign from the gods of happenstance. I'll keep this promise, Ushiromi and Natsuhi. I require nothing in return. Richi, the one who serves you, has already paid me plenty in advance. Gap may have seemed irresponsible, but she actually possessed a strong sense of duty. She was the kind of person who just couldn't leave someone in trouble alone. Payment in advance? Oh, when did I do that? I have no memory of such a thing. <laughs> oh, I just mean those magical items you couldn't remember where you put. I made off with quite a few of them. What? So that was your doing after all? Give him back! Give back my illusionary silver crystal and moonstick! I still haven't played around by sticking them together yet! <laughs> That's the sort of magic and strategy you can expect from me. I can hide Goldsmith away in a world where no one will be able to find him. Let me know the instant you need that magic. Until then, feel free to think of another, safer plan. True, true. Having alternatives is beneficial for your peace of mind. And without that, you'll never think up a brilliant plan. Natsuhi, we have quite some time remaining for us tonight. Let's leave Gap's strategy as a final trump card, and iron out a plan of our own for now. Please give us permission, and please give us the trust, magical power, and absolute conviction will succeed. need to succeed without fail. If you have faith, I will make your dreams come true. If you succumb to doubt, then I will make those nightmares come true. You must build your own future. Kinzo would disappear, and right in the middle of this family conference, such a move truly would be a last resort. Hmm. Burying this final trump card in her heart, Natsuhi decided that she would grope around for a different plan until the last second. After all, this long, long night has only just begun. Burncastle and her peace had just had just as long to prepare as Natsuhi did. Hmm. So where are we now? I heard a door. Uh, looks like we're outside. Gouge the foot and kill. And that completes it. I see, so that really was what gouge meant. Once again, my reasoning was correct. The feel of it this time was clearly different from the previous times. As though some sort of device had activated. However, as far as a quick glance could tell, there was no dramatic change, such as an entrance or some form, sort of opening. Apparently, they would need to do just a little more before they could find it. You're incredible. If we really do find the gold, we'll have to split it together. Enjoying the intellectual stimulation is enough for me. The only thing I like is solving riddles. The only reward I need is proof that I was right. She shrugged it off, implying that just seeing the gold would be enough. 
Then she crouched down, peering fixedly at the lock mechanism. Where are they? They're clearly on the island. So that's something. It's definitely no mistake to say this girl really loves solving riddles. For her, treasure hunting is all about the delicious process of exposing secrets. So she has no interest whatsoever in getting the treasure for herself and becoming a billionaire. I see. Pretty cocky of you, setting up a device like this. The mistake you all made was letting me on this island in the first place. Simply by the existence of the epitaph in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Ferudo Erika. What do you think, everyone? <laughs> I'm the only one here. Stop with that catchphrase. <laughs> As she said this to the now exposed contraption, she grinned. Her smile was triumphant, but it was more fully characterized by the small bit of unpleasant disdain contained within. After solving the riddle, she was probably reveling in the pleasure of having won against the one who had proposed it. And she enjoyed her ability to scoff at this person now. If we find the gold now, the successor won't be Kraus, but you! Heh. <laughs> well, I wonder. Isn't Kraus kind of arrogant? You might even call him a braggart. It'll be pretty amusing to see him lose both the gold and his position as the successor to his nephew in the course of a single night, won't it? Hmm. Erica was still crouched down as she spoke, her back to Batware as she toyed around with the device. Where are they? Trees. Jessica was her name, right? The girl who talked back to me. Ugh. Yeah. She really was acting big about her father being the successor. When she wakes up tomorrow and learns that you've inherited all the gold, and that her father is no longer the successor, I wonder what kind of expression she'll have on her face. I've got no intention of keeping that 20 billion to myself. Well, if I got even 10%, that'd be as much as I could handle. We can split the rest fairly amongst the family. I'm even less interested in being the successor. I'd be glad to let Uncle Krauss deal with that. Will you really be able to settle things that easily in the end? <laughs> well, rather than trying to make guesses about that, I imagine it'll be more fun to guess what the expression Jessica wears tomorrow, and what kind of sad excuses she'll try to make. She does die, right, Jessica? Because uh, I'd imagine those six... Like, we were shown a clip earlier with Erica cornering Natsuhi as the culprit. So I'd imagine those six shown dead on that one screen that popped up at the end of episode one. That, uh... That means Jessica dies. And if I remember correctly, so does George... So does Genji, Rosa, Maria, and I think Hideyoshi. Hmm. Oh, she cackled. You really do have a nasty personality. Oh? Couldn't you reason that out from the time you learned that I like solving riddles? I'm an intellectual rapist who enjoys exposing things people try to hide. Get it? That is one way to word a sentence. Oh my god. What? <laughs> What the? Oh, okay, she's very smug. And crude, kinda, too. The same thing goes for solving the epitaph's riddle. I'll bet you wanted to expose the gold grandfather worked so hard to hide. Yes, that was my goal at first, but it changed partway through. Partway through? Changed to what? I mean, Jessica. She butted in on my reasoning, contaminating that pure and noble time. Ever since then, I've been trying to solve the epitaph so I could teach that Jessica a lesson. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll make all opponents surrender, no matter who they are. That is my sole pleasure. Do you still need me to reason it out for you? The Shiromi and Jessica irritated me. That's why I wanted to put her in her place and decided to solve the epitaph. Yeah, she's really showing her true colors now, isn't she? That's what led to the emotions I hold now. Can you reason out what those emotions are? Hmm. This time I turned my back on her in earnest. Did I get a bit too excited by this riddle solving game, letting her drive me on and do something terrible? That's right. It should have been possible to reason this out. If the riddle is solved, the relatives will probably freak out about who the successor should be. Dad and some others will probably push for me, the discoverer, to be the successor. And some relatives not thrilled with that prospect will probably oppose them. Despite how adamantly Erica affirmed it, it isn't written anywhere that the one who solves the riddle of the epitaph becomes the successor. 
Because of this, it'll lead to a fight between those who acknowledge that theory and those who don't. If I reason out what'll happen next, as Erica did, it'll probably lead to a messy fight between Uncle Kraus and the rest of the relatives. Now that I've solved the riddle, will Jessica admire me or curse me? I don't want to think about that now. Erica was still mumbling. Apparently, she had already started trying to reason it out. As I began to feel very bad, I vaguely gazed out into the black night. So they're outside, clearly. Fiddling with a door. Or a lock. Was there a lock on the, on the side of a building or something? I thought Eva went, like, to the wall of the Rose Garden, but maybe she went somewhere else. At that time, I looked at a dim outdoor light, and saw the silhouette of a person in front of it. I thought I must be seeing things. After all, it was unthinkable that someone could have been standing there this whole time, pounded upon by the rain without even an umbrella. However, the silhouette didn't move an inch, and maybe, no, it couldn't be. It was looking at me, and it was... who? Beatrice? Oh my. Oh, I, I guess this does make sense. Kinzo will take a walk in the woods and never come back. Hi, Kinzo! Grandfather. At that moment, I understood. Grandfather's probably been watching us solve the riddle this whole time. And he watched as we spectacularly solved the whole thing. So we're in the woods. Is this at the Kuidorian, then? Or the chapel? Well, was the chapel in the woods? I don't remember. A lock. Well, I guess there's the gate to Kuidorian. But then there is the door to the chapel. It could be the door to the Kuidorian. Huh. And there was that whole thing about characters. I don't know. Unless there were letters printed above the door of the Kuidor- Wait, Kuidorian is 10 letters. So that's not 11 or 13. Chapel 6. <laughs> I mean, the Kuidorian is 13. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Without a doubt, there was a faint smile on Grandfather's face. Grandfather, who had never worn anything except moody and frightening expressions, looked me in the eye and smiled at me for the first time. Almost as though he was saying, how impudent. Or else, I never thought it would be you. However, this is still the result that Grandfather's epitaph chose, so I'm sure he accepted that result. In the end, he grinned one more time. Of course, he didn't use words. His smile seemed to be wordlessly saying, well done. I didn't know how I should respond. I couldn't do anything but stand there in shock, ignoring Erica as she crouched down, mumbling with her back towards me. Then, Grandfather stretched a hand out from the folds of his cloak and pointed at something. When I looked in that direction, there was... The thing he was pointing at was probably the signpost to the Golden Man. What? Go. I'm sure Grandfather said that one word. I nodded to show that I understood. After watching that, Grandfather nodded back, satisfied. Then, with the spin of his cloak, he disappeared, seeming to melt into the darkness. The expression on his face at the end was a smile that was, for the first time, truly satisfied. Are you listening, Butler? Did you hear my reasoning? I found it. That's the signpost to the Golden Land. Huh? Ah, it's facing a different direction than it used to. I see. So it means go that way. You've got some pretty good powers of observation. <laughs> Grandfather told me about it. Huh? Kinzo? Where is he? I'm going. Let's have a look at what you're showing us. What is this golden man? Interesting. We started to walk. The entrance to the golden land was right there. A signpost. So, my epitaph has finally been solved. And it was Battler who did it. <laughs> Wonderful. Couldn't be better. When I think about it, I was also a head that no one saw coming. Oh, this is Kinzo's inner thoughts. How amusing that the ones who succeed me is just as surprising. I have no more regrets in life. Beatrice, I am coming to join you, along with a present. The miracle chosen by my epitaph. Battler of all people. That Battler. 
<laughs> At the very, very end of my life, I have seen a true miracle. Beatrice, I want this bat. <laughs> Thank you, Kenzo, for being extra as always. Oh boy. Yep, the staircase. This query connects to the Kuadorian, so maybe it is the door to the Kuadorian or the gate to the Kuadorian. But a signpost in the woods. Yep, and there's the gold. Ha 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 ha! Yahoo! Ha ha ha! Which one said that? <laughs> Hmm. Except for its non-corrosive properties, there's no practical way to turn gold into the mon into money. And Im I imagine it'd take a lot of work to exchange all this for cash. At the end of a crude underground tunnel, a in a VIP room so beautiful it seemed improper, was a pile of gold so large that there could be no doubting its 20 billion yen worth. Erica was calm, but Batwer couldn't suppress his excitement. Okay, so now I know who was talking in each of those. As for which of the two was the correct reaction to show after seeing a mountain of gold, only those who saw the scene with their own eyes could say for sure. In this day and age, it's said that an average salary man earns about 200 million yen in wages over his life, and this, tw and this is 20 billion yen worth of gold. With even one hundredth of this gold mountain, a single human can live their entire life without working. What is labor? Isn't it the very point of a human's life since a person who doesn't work cannot eat? If so, then 200 million yen is enough to make a single person's life complete. And this is 20 billion yen. This would account for the labors of 100 humans. No, a single human life 100 times over. Of course, if you still wanted to work, you could. Any money you gained as a result could be used to play with. After all, you would already have enough money to live for your entire life. No, for eternity! No, wait, I mustn't keep it all to myself. I can split it up among 100 people. If I could create a world where a full 100 humans wouldn't have to work for their whole lives, just what kind of world would that be? Yeah, there's no doubt at all. This is the Golden Land! Nope. Oh, womp. There you go! Burn that where magnificently discovered the gold. Congrats! <laughs> I had her hide the more central parts of it, but what's wrong with being just a little mean, right? Sure, do that as much as you like. I'm not interested in the micro details, about what kind of riddle it was or what kind of answer it had. The important thing is that as a result, 10 tons of gold were discovered. The gold was discovered in the third game as well, by Aunt Eva. Aunt, e Aunt Rosa also witnessed it. However, the two of them hadn't spoken of the gold's discovery to anyone. In other words, there was a chance that the gold's discovery was a cat box truth kept between the two of them. More specifically, it was possible the gold didn't exist and was just an illusion. However, I have finally found it. The cat box has been opened. It'd be a waste of time to do that repeat it game, so I'll give you a little bonus. This mountain of gold is real. All of the ingots piled up here are real, pure gold. There are absolutely no tricks such as replicas or fakes. Okay, then wah. Where did Kinzo get this? Or was it even Kinzo that got it? Okay, got it. I'll accept that this gold exists. However, there are still some things I can't accept. Of course. You met with him, didn't you? With Kinzo. <laughs> Even though Kinzo's supposedly an illusion, you met with him just a second ago, right? <laughs> I guess there, that really was magic, wasn't it? Ridiculous. I didn't exchange any words with Grandfather. I only felt as though Grandfather and I had exchanged words. Give it a rest. The same move won't work again. In that case, your blue truth, if you please. I was probably in an excited state after solving the Epitaph's riddle. Then I mistook something for Grandfather. For example, maybe there was some kind of sheet or cover that had gotten caught in a dark grove of trees, which looked like Grandfather wearing a pitch black coat. As a result, I mistakenly thought that I had, I'd had some sort of conversation with Grandfather. Blue truth, valid. Well, I did say the exact same thing in blue. So, did it work? Where's your counter with the red truth? I have none. At least not now, okay? <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Not now. I feel like the sheet thing is kind of like bonkers, but maybe tree branches or something roughly forming the shape of Kinzo. 
the me who'd let out a strange yell in front of the gold mountain was finally starting to regain his cool. Now that we found it, there's no covering it up. I vaguely considered keeping this discovery a secret. However, Erica wanted to prove that her own reasoning was correct by announcing this to everyone. So she really is an intellectual rapist, just as she says. <sighs> that f that's still such a weird phrase. Like, what's your title? An intellectual rapist. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> do we put her in the sex offender registry? <laughs> I'm not sure. This is odd. <laughs> the puzzle solving game is what's important to her. And she doesn't intend to take any responsibility for what happens after the riddle is solved. A riddle is sort of like a lock. Locks exist to be locked. Thanks. Thank you very much for that insight. And they're only significant when they're locked. Therefore, it ought to be essential to have some goal in mind when exposing such a thing. However, to this girl, the act of exposing is itself her final goal. And she has no intention of taking responsibility for anything that happens later. Oh boy. We've entered the Team Magma hideout. Maybe the true storm to hit Rokanjima isn't the Typhoon, but her. She won't keep this discovery secret. She'll definitely announce it so she can brag about her success. Then she'll call a real storm down upon this island. I won't be able to keep this covered up. I did not mean to right click. In that case, there's nothing to do but announce this fact fairly to all. I can't imagine what'll happen after that. As she grinned, Erica muttered to herself. She must have been anticipating the uproar that the relatives would soon bring about. To her, merely imagining that was far sweeter than 20 billion yen in gold. Why'd she need an atlas, though? Oh, and she has a different expression now. Have I seen this one? Maybe? I don't know. Simply by the existence of the epitaph in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Furuto Erika. What do you think, everyone? Stop saying that, I'm the only one here. <laughs> oh, great. Yep. She is bonkers. Go fucking figure, right? Of course, like, every female character is bonkers in this series. In more ways than one. <laughs> knock knock, knock knock. The sudden sound of someone banging fiercely on the door brought Natsuhi to her senses. She had probably nodded off in the study while planning how they would overcome the next day. But what could it be, at a time like this? More importantly, the knock itself was strange. If someone wanted to contact her, they could have just used the internal phone line. She told them that she'd be here. Realizing that something strange was going on, Nazi shook her head one more time, completely throwing off her drowsiness. Father! Father! Oh, Eva. Okay. Father! Father! It's Eva! I have an urgent, vital matter to discuss with you. It was Eva's voice. What is this? I thought I told him to lock the doors and windows of the mansion tightly after everyone left for the guest house. So why is Eva here? Good question. Nazi ran up to the door, responded with a small knock, and spoke through the door in a quiet voice. What is it? You're too noisy. Nazi? Why are you in father's study at this hour? I told you to be quiet. Have you forgotten that the head values peace and silence more than anything else? Now's not the time to be saying that! Stop harping on that and open up quickly! Bring father out! The head just went to sleep! I don't know what business you have, but I will deal with it tomorrow! I don't have any business with you! Just open up right now! Sometimes, multiple schemes and assumptions can fall apart due to the most direct, simple, and emotional of strategies. This is bad. If I open the door, Eva will probably throw herself forwards and rush into the study. Now I can't even open this door. At that moment, the phone suddenly rang. It's okay. Both of the keys to the study are here. No one can open this door. Natsuhi inched away from the door and grabbed the receiver. Hello? It's Natsuhi. It's me. Things are bad. I want you to come down to the parlor quickly. Oh, crap. It's me. Things are bad. I want you to come down to the parlor. Quickly. It was from Kraus. His tone was strained. What in the world happened? It would seem that Batwer and this guest called Erika solved the witch's epitaph and found the gold. Huh? Is that true? Rudolph and the rest have forced their way in. They're saying Batwer will show everyone the way to the hidden gold. Right now, Eva is just outside the study door, yelling at me to open it. But if I do that now, she might push her way inside. 
I understand. I will go there too. Don't worry about Eva. Just stay there and don't do anything. I'll give you a signal once I've gotten Eva away from the door, so leave as soon as you hear that. Ready? Hmm. Right after that, Kraus came up the staircase accompanied by Genji. A heated debate started between him and Eva. Him and Eva. Open up! No, calm down. In the middle of that, there was a small knock as a signal. Kraus had cleverly pushed Eva away from the door and distracted her. During that gap, Nasi slipped out of the study and quickly shut the door. Eva noticed this and her face twisted in disappointment. But the heavy sound of the auto lock had already rung out and the door had been sealed. The gold of the epitaph has been found. It's only natural that we should inform father about this. Or else what? Is there some reason you can't tell father about this? Father gave strict orders that he not be awakened no matter what after he went to bed. Following those orders is the duty of the head's representative. Isn't that right, Genji? Yes. The master's sleep must not be disturbed, no matter what happens. Even a rule like that depends on time and circumstances, doesn't it? I mean, the epitaph was solved. Father has a right to know straight away. Of course, the two of us will report on everything to the head tomorrow. That's our duty as the head's representatives. I don't care about that. Come on, just open this door. Let me see father. Father, father, can you hear me? It's Eva. Please open up. Ow, ow, let go of me. That hurts. We're telling you to listen to us. Don't knock on the door so loudly. Ouch! Ow, 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 let go, let go of me. Kraus, Eva, the master is sleeping. Please refrain from disturbing him any further. When Genji spoke firmly, the two finally ceased their scuffle. It seemed that Genji, the one who had spoken for Kinzo since they were very young, still possessed an air of dignity strong enough to handle both Kraus and Eva. Eva put her argument aside for the time being. She could hold off worrying about that until after she saw the gold with her own eyes. After all, not even Eva had seen it for herself yet. Nazi and the others had managed to somehow deal with the momentary crisis. However, the move of the demons that would sneer upon their efforts had already begun. Oh boy. Butler solved the riddle of the epitaph, you say? Yes, though he had a lot of help from that Erica girl. Battler was the one who reached the answer. Erica has proclaimed that she will abandon her rights to the Golden Land. Therefore, the one who reached the Golden Land is Battler. Fate can be truly amusing to think that Battler would make it there. What will you do, Beato? He promised to stop the ceremony if anyone solved the epitaph's riddle. Yes, that was the deal. That was the deal, indeed. Apparently, Butler does not intend to become the master of the Golden Land. It seems that no one will become our master. That is also fate. It has been several decades since we first manifested in the human world through our bond with Lord Goldsmith. The time since then has been so very fun. Come on, Leah, you sound like an old lady. <laughs> so what are we going to do? If we go by Ricci and Goldsmith's rules, now that Battler solved the epitaph and decided not to become our master, We've been relieved from duty, right? That's true. I have no regrets at all. I've been prepared to be kicked out into Ka- Cositis? All this time. Wait! We can't let that happen. You might not have any regrets, but I will keep on serving Natsuhi. It would be quite irresponsible to let ourselves be relieved from duty just because Battler solved the epitaph. Witches are forbidden from breaking contracts, but they also must not fail to show gratitude. True, we should serve her until the family conference ends. In that case, you won't be relieved from duty for a while either, Lord Goldsmith. Perhaps you should wait until you've overcome the fa this family conference safely, said goodbye to Nazi at the very least, and if possible rewarded her for all her efforts. Indeed, she has done well supporting my foolish son. You're a fallen angel with one of its wings plucked off, aren't you? Just leave the other wing as a parting gift and go. Indeed. Perhaps that would be fitting. Natsuhi may be worthy of bearing my wing. However, we are approaching the critical moment. Your reward is waiting for you. Try to make it through this test unscathed, Natsuhi. Is this after- no, Genji was the first Twilight, I think. So stopping the ceremony, that's obviously 
the ceremony. Herkadurka. Okay then. Nah. Boom. Gold. The mountain of gold left everyone speechless. Regardless of how strongly they had believed in its existence, no one could look at this much real gold and not be shocked. To think a place like this existed! I can't believe it. That dad. Everyone was stunned by the gold. The first one to break the silence and jump around in ecstasy was Hideyoshi, as he do. But now, in an excited laugh, he clung to the wall of gold. Then he felt the cold, hard touch of it all over his cheek. <laughs> this, this is incredible! It's the real thing! <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, Rudolph? I'm gonna guess? <laughs> that damn dad of ours, sticking this much gold in such a ridiculous place. Uh, now that we have this much, we no longer have anything to fear. With this, we could overcome any kind of trial. Rosa! What? Oh, Eva. Okay. Now that we have this much, we no longer have anything to fear. With this, we could overcome any kind of trial. Rosa! Sister, sister! Be able to find happiness with this, right? Eva and Rosa moved towards each other at the same time and hugged as they broke down crying. Ecstasy and shock, wonder and sighs. After stepping forward in front of the pile of gold that had caused these mixed emotions, Erica spoke as though she were an announcer in some show. If this world is money, then this gold is the embodiment of happiness. Congratulations, everyone! I pray that this discovery makes all of your lives richer. I take my hat off to you. To think you'd solve the epitaph within a single day of coming to this island. If you couldn't solve it in a single day, then you wouldn't be able to solve it no matter how many days you had. After all, it doesn't take more than an instant for your little gray cells to give you a flash of intuition. Also, I wouldn't have been able to solve this riddle myself. I ask that you praise Batwurst's achievement as well, everyone. <laughs> I abandon any rights to this discovery. I'm already satisfied to have my reasoning proved correct. So I'd like to give Batwurst full credit. I may be here, but please continue discussion as though I, as, uh, as though I wasn't. Batwurst called all of the adults here, making sure that none of the cousins would notice. That can only mean one thing. He must have wanted to begin the true family conference with all of you. Erica, quit deciding things on your own. My apologies. In that case, I'll step down as the facilitator of these proceedings. So who will take my place? Shrugging, Erica looked around at everyone. After a short period of silence, Eva made the first move. None of us have forgotten the deal we made earlier today, right? Yeah. Oh, I just realized something. Eva's little pin there. The pin in her hair. Is that visible on the screen? No, it looks like something different there. Hmm, yeah, that... It's different, but it looks kind of similar. Okay, whatever. Yeah, divided between the four of us, with 2.5 billion for each. And then, the successor gets another 10 billion. Wait a second! Who decided that the one who discovers the gold becomes the successor? Hold up, you won't be able to get away with that, Natsuhi. We've all been arguing based on that premise this whole time, haven't we? You really think we can you can pretend that never happened now? That's right! Weren't you the one worrying about how, if one of the servants solved the riddle, they might consider themselves the successor? But nowhere is it explicitly written that it's the truth, right? You bastard! We were all aware of it, weren't we? That's right, bro. Are you gonna change your position this late in the game? Though it was never stipulated, I believe it was common knowledge between us. I don't see how you can suggest we ignore it completely. You can't just interpret the head's epitaph however you like! Where is it written that the one who finds the gold becomes the successor? The epitaph was decided upon by the head! You have no right to decide these things for yourselves. Calm down, Natsuhi. How could I calm down? Yes, I do find it quite impressive that Battler solved the epitaph. I certainly believe he should be rewarded for it. However, it's clearly a stretch to suggest that he deserves half of everything. And you won't get away with the argument that the Discoverer becomes the successor. <laughs> That's a new face. That's low, Natsuhi. This is completely different from what you were saying earlier today. I agree. 
though it was never stipulated. The fact that whoever solves the epitaph becomes the successor has always been the greatest unwritten rule we've had. It's not fair if you start complaining about that at the last second, right? Yeah, it isn't fair. Anyway, this gold is Father's. We can't decide how we'd be split up without Father's permission. No way, that's low Natsuhi. We're talking about this we were talking about this on and on earlier, right? And you saying that whole conversation today was a bunch of bull? It just ain't right. Why don't we just vote on it? Battler, the one who found the gold is the successor. My husband and I have no objections. What about you, Rudolph and Kyrie? Rosa? No objections here. Nice going, Battler. I have no objections either. Battler is the true successor, chosen by the epitaph. If you aren't satisfied, then why don't we just ask Father directly? That's right. Just like he said, Natsuhi, Father is the one who wrote the riddle of the epitaph, and he's also the proper owner of this gold. In that case, shouldn't we talk to Father about this directly? How should Battler, the person who discovered the gold, be treated? I believe Father is the only one capable of making such a decision. What? Didn't I tell you to calm down? Rosa and Kyrie are right. Let's ask Father. Your turn is already over. Kraus, Natsuhi? Yeah, yeah, bring father out to us. We won't get anywhere with just you two. Let's begin the real family conference. Does this look like something you can put just put off just because he's tired? If we take this thing lightly, we'll have a massive problem on our hands. Hey, are you listening? We won't get anywhere with just you. Bring father out right now. Who said that? I'd imagine Eva. Are family conferences always like this? How the hell do I know? They're probably always like this on the inside. <laughs> Looks like they won't be able to get this figured out right now without Kinzo. To think he's being called out to settle his children's fight, even though it's been announced that he only has a short while to live. I wonder how he feels about right now. <laughs> Imagining that, no, reasoning that out will be a treat. The parents ignored Batwer and Erica and kept yelling at each other, on and on. Even though Batwer has more or less imagined that this sort of thing happened behind the scenes, this was the first time he'd seen it. He suspected it since six years ago, and he'd been able to get a pretty good idea of what this was like, by the darkening expressions on his parents' faces when this time of year drew near. However, this argument his relatives were having before his very eyes was much more ugly than he'd imagined. That's why he was very glad that he'd called the adults out here without letting the cousins catch wind of anything. Okay, well, uh, I have something that I really need to do. I know this isn't the best stopping point, but it's time sensitive. So, that's, and plus this is a decent stopping point. So that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. If you liked it, be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!